with noise cancelling headphones, over ear headphones, you are doing what you are listening to and that cuts off the rest of the world. With these, you can do what you are listening to while being part of the rest of the world. So it allows you to, I guess, multi-listen, multitask. And I think that's where these really shine. So the design has been updated. If you have a look at these, you can see potentially that there is a silver sort of metallic element added to them that is not present within the shocks open fit. And also the battery has been removed from the rear of the headphone and placed internally. And you will see that instead there is sort of a comfortable squishy bit there, um, which adds to the comfort of the headphones. Touch functions are different as well. These had only the ability to skip songs. Uh, there was customization, but it was just double tap, double tap. The Shox Open Fit Air now has the ability to hold as well to change things like volume. So out of the packet, double tapping, skip songs forward on the right, pauses, plays on the left, takes calls on the left, and holding on the right increases volume, holding on the left decreases volume. This is a welcome addition to the product, but we're gonna circle back to this because there is some issues. The controls are fully customizable in the app, and you'll see that as we're going here. A couple of different options. I've not strayed from the factory default settings because I think these are the best. So there's a lot of bullshit marketing talk that I could take you through, but really what you're here for is a quick summary of my thoughts, so here we are. So number one, and this is not different to any of the others, but I'm a real fan of the open ear design. I find that the open ear design allows for music, podcasts, audio books to more seamlessly integrate into your life because you can use these headphones while you're doing more activities that you might not want noise cancelling headphones for. The charging case has a lower profile than the previous charging case and it also has smoothed out edges which means that traveling with these in your pocket is a more comfortable experience and it also doesn't look like you're packing something weird in there. However, I have a tendency to leave the charging case places and this is because the battery life on these is really, really good. Tw up to 28 hours, they say on the website, and I can attest to that. And so I wish there was like an air tag in here that allowed me to find the case on my phone. I think that would be a really good addition to a lot of these charging cases because if you lose the charging cases, you have to buy a new set of headphones. So essentially, this is a $199 charging case, and that's unfortunate. All right, so what you're experiencing here is a direct plea. I'm at 885 subscribers, and I'm not here to fuck spiders. I'm not messing around. I want to hit the 1,000, and you can make that difference by hitting subscribe. I know a lot of YouTubers do this, but you know what? They've got shitter channels than mine. I reckon mine is at least above average. So why don't you just go and hit that subscribe button, and you can make me a very happy man. On with the show. They feel lighter than the previous iteration. They're not. If you have a look at the uh, the scales here, they're not actually any lighter, but they, they feel lighter. And I think, again, that's because the battery has been moved to the center here, as opposed to these where the battery is at the back, which just makes the weight distribution feel stranger. The sound quality is about the same as the Open Fits, however, it is way better than Open Run. So if you are deciding between Open Runs and Open Fit, definitely go for the Open Fit if you are choosing a music headphone. The expanded touch functionality is welcome, however, there has been an issue. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen enough that I think that we need to talk about it. The touchpad, which is the section inside the silver metallic area. This, if it gets water on it, and this can be sweat. I got it with dew walking out early in the morning, taking my dog for a walk. This can simulate your finger being on the touch panel and your volume slowly starts to decrease until it bottoms out. 
and unless you wipe the moisture off, there's nothing you can do to stop this. So this is fine if you're out for a walk, you just take the headphone off, rub it on your shirt, put it back in your ear, turn the volume up with your right touch. This is not fine if you're cycling and you have a cycling jersey that is supposed to be a material that doesn't absorb water and you're trying to rub it on your jersey, it just doesn't seem to do the trick. And so if you're out cycling, this can be problematic. Again, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough that it's pissed me off. The USB-C charging on this, similar with the open fit, is welcome. The Open Run Pros don't have USB-C charging, they have a proprietary case and I used to ride to and from work and I found that I would sometimes leave the house, find that my headphones were dead or dying and I couldn't charge them at work because I didn't have more than one cable. They're 24 bucks, they're not that expensive but it's just something everyone has a USB-C charging cable, you can normally find them lying around and so as a result having access to that is awesome. Phone calls are clearer than in the past, I even find them clearer than the open fit and I find that people on the other end are able to hear me better with the open fit airs as opposed to the open fits and they are $100 dues, almost $100 dues cheaper, $90. The Open Fits are 289 smackaroos and the Open Fit Airs come in at a cool 199, which puts them in that lower bracket. Anything under $200, I think, becomes more accessible to people. And so these are a bit of a headphone for the people. So it's a cycling channel and it would be remiss of me to not address riding with these on the bike. I have a pair of Shox Open Run Pros and I've currently lent them to a friend because I find that these are doing the job exactly how I want them to. If you turn the volume down to a level where you can hear your surroundings, the perception around you is fine. The bass does push through more than with the bone conduction headphones and this can mean that you can't hear some of those trucks rolling up kind of things until they are closer than with the Open Run Pro. So, Open Run Pros are still your premium cycling headphone, but the Open Run Pros are not a great headphone. And one area where these really shine is with the Open Run Pros, the wind interference as you're riding and the lack of sort of a base, they can be quite tinny because of the fact that they use that bone conduction. You can't hear podcasts and audiobooks well. I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm writing by myself and audiobooks, especially when I'm commuting to and from work, and these allow me to do that. I often write on my commutes on cycle paths, so I don't have to worry about traffic, and these fill that niche perfectly. The Open Run Pros do not. So if you're looking for a cycling headphone, if all you do is riding on the road, you can turn these down, but it's probably the Open Run Pro that you want to get. However, if you're looking for a headphone that does everything across the board, these are a winner, man. These are really good. So where I think that these really do shine though is lifestyle. I use these all the time. In fact, I will often just be walking around the house forgetting I wear them because the design is quite good, but I will use them when I'm preparing bottles in the morning for my kids. I will use them when I'm out on a walk with my kids so I can listen to an audio book, but also hear and interact with my kids when they're in the pram. I use them when I'm doing the housework so I can hear my wife calling out to me if she needs something for me. I basically have these on when I'm at home for a good chunk of the day. Partly because I forget they're on, but also because I find that these don't, well, I guess it's kind of hard to explain, but I guess with noise cancelling headphones, over ear headphones, you are doing what you are listening to and that cuts off the rest of the world. With these, you can do what you are listening to while being part of the rest of the world. So it allows you to, I guess, multi-listen, multitask, and I think that's where these really shine. Are these the best cycling headphone? No. But are these the best all-round headphone that also serves as a really good cycling headphone? In my personal opinion, 
Yeah.